Hosea, to be exact. My mama named me Hannah as a promise to my nanny. <laughs> That's what I call my grandmother on my mama's side. My dad gave me my middle name. He said that Nevea is heaven spelled backwards. H E. <laughs> yeah, heaven. He thought that name was really pretty, and most people think so too. You know, come to think of it, a lot of people are very nice to me. They're always smiling when they talk to me. They hold hands with me when I walk. They give me presents all the time. It's like I'm some sort of star of the stage. <laughs> yeah, I get spoiled like one at least. My mama buys me all kinds of pretty clothes, and my dad cooks or brings anything I want to eat. I even get to sit down in daddy's big comfortable recliner, and when I'm done, I get to play my favorite video games or watch my favorite TV shows. I love the games that have a group of heroes that go on great adventures. That's the beauty of video games. You get to be the hero and go on those adventures. That's what I want to be, you know, a hero. Okay, before we can discharge you, just some last minute fact checking. Let's check reflexes. Uh huh. And now the little eyes. Uh huh. Six pounds, seven ounces, and 22 inches long. Looks like she's going to be tall from the looks of dad here. And we went full term with the pregnancy, correct, mom? Yes, Dr. Union. All 40 weeks have been waiting here for her to come into our lives. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And it looks like we've got a name ready to go. Yes, Doc. Hannah. Hannah Nevea. Nevea. That's interesting. Well, it's heaven spelled backwards, but I'll probably just end up calling her my little Lee. Little Lee is Lee a family name? No, my husband is a movie buff, and right now he's on a rush hour kick. These movies have Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker in them. They play these two cops in their cultural backgrounds clash, which makes it hilarious, <laughs> apparently. Be in mind, Doctor, my husband's the kind of guy that finds his own jokes funny. Okay. <laughs> well, you see in the second film, Chris Tucker's doing some karaoke at a restaurant, and he sees Jackie Chan's character, Inspector Lee, out in the crowd, and he keeps on trying to get him to come up on stage, so he goes, Jamal Lee! <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Just like Michael Jackson used to say, you know, Jamal! <laughs> Well, anyways, <laughs> one day my wife and I, well, we're leaving the house and she's taking more time than I thought necessary. So I stop, I look her dead in the eye and I go, Jamal Lee! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been calling her Lee so much that she just responds to it now. And so, my little Lee. <laughs> yeah, that's my mom and dad. I can hear them through this door. Aren't they just beautiful? My mom especially. My dad always tells his students that the first thing they have to learn in his classes is that his wife is hot. H-O-T, hot. It's the first thing he says whenever he gets up in front of the students and even the parents. Hello, everyone. I am your teacher, and my wife is a babe. Oh, right? May we ask, Mom and Dad, for your profiles, what is it you do for a living? Um, I did work as a bank teller until mm -hmm. maternity leave. My husband said that once we had Hannah, that if I wanted to, I could stay home with her until she was ready to start school or until I felt like working again. Very thoughtful, Dad. Impressive. Taking on the full weight of the responsibilities. Well, why compared to a mother's care and diligence? I'm afraid my job mm -hmm. fell in comparison. Jobs? And what is it you do for a living? Well, I'm the youth pastor at our church, and I teach high school English and theater arts. Well, sir, those are tremendous responsibilities in their own right. I wouldn't be where I am without my educators. So thank you for your work. Well, no, doctor. Thank you for yours. Mm -hmm. Without you, we wouldn't have our perfect little miracle here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect little miracle. I mean, come on. My parents rock. They're the best ever. Since that day, they did everything that the perfect parents are supposed to do. They read to me, played with me. They even let me sleep in their big mom and dad bed all nice and safe for like the first two years of my life. They were always taking pictures though. It was kind of annoying to always have a camera or phone shoved in my face. But they got some pretty good ones. Here's one of me crawling. Well, actually, I didn't really crawl. Baby, you're not gonna believe this. Look at this video of Hannah uh, crawling, I guess. It's so funny. She puts her right hand down on the ground cocks those little legs underneath, and then scoots around on her right hand on her butt. It's the cutest thing, I swear. Oh, that's a cute picture. 
Oh, look at that crooked little smile. He took that at the beach, yeah? Yeah, she had a real good time. Here's one of her playing with some kids in the sand. She was so focused on that sand that she stayed there and played even when the other kids took off to the water. Oh, that sounds like a good thing, right? I mean, so what? She likes to play by herself. It could be worse. I mean, she could be one little devil of a child, but no, we've got it made pretty well with this one, huh? Well, I was just watching her today and thinking about that. I mean, she sleeps well at night, and she's quiet during church services. It's like those big eyes of hers are always focused on something, like she's zoned in on the preacher or the piano. Well, she was like that with the sand. You sound worried. No, I don't guess so. It's just what I wasn't expecting, you know? I figured squabbles or tummy aches or late nights awake, and you mentioned her smile. Well, she did that crooked smile a lot today. Like she's settling her jaw to one side or something. I guess it's just one of her things. I actually had quite a few things that would become mine. I started walking, but I did it my own way. I like to dance, you see. I like to dance when I walk. I would sway a little bit, bounce up and down. And every once in a while, I'd get this notion to giddy up my horsey, especially when I'd watch cartoons. Baby, look at this video. I just took a Hannah watching her cartoon. See the way she's dancing and patting her little butt. <laughs> Isn't that just beautiful? <laughs> yeah, I've seen her do that. I mean, sometimes I'll be washing the dishes and she'll come walking up behind me, swaying back and forth, patting her little butt. She does it when she's not watching her cartoons? Well, I thought it was just a music thing. No, no, she does it all the time. I mean, sometimes I'll put some of those goldfish crackers out for her in a bowl and she'll reach out with her right hand. I think she's going to be right-handed, by the way. And sometimes they won't even make it to her mouth without getting squashed against her butt. <gasps> Come here, I'll put some out for her. Goldfish, oh my goodness, I forgot how much I love those little cheese crackers. And they're so easy to eat, too. You just grab a whole bunch of them and you shove them in your mouth like this. <gasps> Oops, oh, be careful, baby. Did you see that? She reached out for those crackers and they went flying everywhere. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> Look, she's grabbing at some more, but... Aw, poor baby, she keeps dropping them. Here, let Daddy help. Well, you can't expect a two-year-old to get it right every time. I mean, I practically grabbed everything I could and shoved it in. I was hungry, you know. A growing baby has to eat, and I had no time to waste. All right, baby girl, it's time for another checkup. I suspect we'll be in just as good as health as before. Is there anything I should know about, Mom and Dad? Well, she's been eating okay and walking just all right, with a few stumbles here and there, um, especially if she tries to step over something. Mm -hmm. Just the other day, she was stepping toward a vacuum cord, and she just froze like there was a wall in front of her or something. She wouldn't even try and step over till I came over to help. And, well, we've noticed here recently that mm -hmm. she'll sort of hold her breath every so often, and she'll suck yeah. air in and out quickly and then go back to normal, but well, one time she held it for so long that she passed out on us. Of course, she started breathing immediately after, but it was still a little scary. And now we've noticed her breathing in shorter breaths, but well, I guess never to the point of passing out again. That is unusual. Is there anything else you may have noticed? Well, she sticks her little belly out when she's breathing like that, and I put my hand up to it just to see if she would expel, I guess. But it's hard as a rock. Even after she breathes out, it's still protruding. She may be swallowing some air. We'll check on that. Is there anything else? Well, uh, we, we've noticed that she's not reaching out for her food anymore. Um, we'll put her plate in front of her, and, and she won't even try and hold her spoon. I mean, she used to rake her goldfish crackers out of the bowl, but she just looks at them now. And we've tried putting some in her hands, but she drops them immediately. It's, it's like she doesn't want to do it or something. I, we, we've resorted to feeding her again, like we, like we did when she was an infant. We've also noticed that um, she'll do this little patting motion where she'll pat herself on the hip, and other times she'll take her right hand and tap her right shoulder um, kind of like this. Mm -hmm. Well, we've also noticed that she'll start to wring her hands like she's always washing her hands. And she's doing it so often, she's getting little blisters, and no matter what we do, we can't seem to get her to stop. Wringing hands? How about speech? Has she acquired any words yet? Well, she's been saying mama a lot to my wife, and, well, she mumbles when she talks to the TV or her toys, but well, come to think of it, she hasn't even picked up any toys recently. I got her to hold on to a stuffed penguin for about three minutes or so. 
No, for the most part, she just grunts and stares at them, drops them and moves on around the house in search of whatever. So no, Mama's all we've gotten. Yeah, and there will be times we'll try and get her attention, mm -hmm. and nothing distracts her. Loud noises, nothing. She even managed to sleep through the 4th of July fireworks this year. Never wow. budged. I mean, we thought she was going deaf, but we know she's not. Because she can be in one room, hear her cartoons come on in the other, and come running in to watch. Well, currently her ears seem to be fine, but there's no harm in a hearing checkup. Well, is there something wrong, Doc? You seem a bit worried. Well, let's not jump to any conclusions. I mean, sure, a toddler may decide that there are more interesting things in the world than Mom and Dad. But we have to look at what we know. You say she's breathing out rapidly and will hold her breath. We call that apraxia. Children do that as a coping mechanism or in order to get their way. But, Doc, she started doing this all the time now. And the hand motions as well? Yes, the ringing she does with her hands causes a lot of blisters. And well, when she rubs them together, she cries out in pain, but she won't stop. I mean, you can see the way she's pulling on her middle finger. It's crowing sideways. Well, let's look at the positives here. Physically, your little Lee here is healthy and happy as far as I can tell. Albeit, she is a little smaller than most children her age, but she's alert and her eye focus is amazing. These motions, they may just be a face she's trying out. And as for the eating, try anything from home cooking to fast food to desserts, just to see if she'll take it on. And if she doesn't feed herself, break it into little manageable portions until this phase breaks. After all, kids can be picky. Check back with me in a few weeks and we'll go from there, okay? Mom and Dad worried too much. The doctor was right, I am picky. But as I grew, my taste bud turned to more refined culinary wonders. Chicken strips? I mean, come on, any kind of chicken. I really like this place called Zaxby's, though. You ever heard of it? Their chicken is awesome. So she ate her chicken tenders pretty well, but that's about all I could get her to eat. She wouldn't even try her fries, even with the honey mustard. She just kept closing her mouth and looking away. Baby, I've been doing some digging. You remember what my cousin mentioned last Sunday about the way Hannah was acting during Sunday school? Give it to dorky old dad. He's always reading something. See, he really loves his jobs, being a youth pastor and a teacher. That's pretty cool. He always says that God wants us to learn. That's why we went to school every day and Sunday school every Sunday. I enjoy hearing these stories about this guy named Jesus. The Sunday school lady says that he loves me very much and he loves all the people of the world. His dad is really cool too. His dad created everything in the whole world and all of us exactly as we are. The research here describes a lot of Hannah's characteristics. And pretty soon, they got me started in preschool. Well, dad was always going back to college to get more degrees, so by the time I started preschool, he was already finished with his master's and going back to get a specialist. Total nerd alert, am I right? Still though, if mom ever needed help around the house or if I ever needed someone to play with, Dear old dad is always there. He's my favorite dorky toy. The repetitive hand movements, the response when we call her name. Baby, Hannah may be autistic. As much as I love my daddy, I love my mama more. I mean, that woman is my world. I can see why dad fell in love with her. She is, in my own daddy's words. And listen to this, ladies. Achingly beautiful. Right, right. And I know, I totally get it. When she walks into a room, it's like an angel came out of nowhere. I smile every time I think about her. Thanks to her, I got the award in elementary school for the best dressed kid. Dad likes to joke around and say that he's never seen me in the same outfit twice. And well, that's just not true. I once had to wear the same nightgown twice in a row because my others were being washed. Hello, I am Dr. Augusta, very nice to meet you. I understand that you have been referred to us by your primary pediatrician. You've had some concerns about some characteristics that you think may be linked to autism. Well, I can assure you that you are at the best place for a better diagnosis. Let me explain a little about what an autism diagnosis looks like. Autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, is referred to a broad range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech, and nonverbal communication. It is difficult to nail autism down to a specific type by trait, but we are working every day to help make that a reality. 
For now, we know that there are many subtypes most influenced by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Because autism is a spectrum disorder, a child with autism has a distinct set of strengths and challenges ranging from mild to severe. Sometimes a child may develop sensory sensitivities as well as medical issues such as anxiety, depression, or attention issues. From what you and Dr. Union have told me, Hannah may fit some of these criteria. So to be sure of our diagnosis, we will order up some tests to see what we can find out. So let's start with an EEG. We'll need an MRI, a couple of x-rays. could I ask you something a little out of turn? Of course. Well, forgive me. And believe me, I don't pretend to understand anything about what you folks do here in the medical field. But, well, I've been doing some research of my own on what may be causing some of these traits. And now our doctor back home sent us to you for an autism diagnosis, but we were wondering if you would check this out for us oh. as well. Oh. Well, this is unusual and actually pretty rare. I'll keep this in mind, and to check for this in particular, we will need to do a very specific genetics test. Genetics test? I don't know what Dad wrote on that paper but for it to mean I would need a genetics test? Did dorky old dad think I was some kind of mutant? Actually, that'd be pretty cool. I could be a real hero. I could be like Superman with superhuman strength or like Spider-Man. My mother loves Spider-Man. Whenever Marvel released the Spider-Man movies starring Tobey Maguire, I think that's when she realized how much she was a nerd. Pretty sure that's why she married my dad. Folks, this specific request you've asked me is really a catch. I mean, it's a one in a million diagnosis. I can't confirm here the evidence genetically, but with this specific diagnosis, it can also be affirmed clinically. According to the genetics report, your daughter still has the correct genetic makeup for what is called the MECP2 gene. The absence of that gene would be the genetic cause for her condition. I'm afraid we won't be any further help to you here. However, I would like to send you to the top specialist in this field. She resides at the University of Birmingham in Alabama. She deals specifically with this diagnosis, and if this is what she says is going on, then consider it the truth. I loved watching those two so much. You can tell that they're truly in love. Dad worships the ground Mom walks on, and she tolerates his stupid jokes. Wouldn't it be great if I met a boy like that one day? Someone who would devote their every breath to me. Someone I could look at the way my dad looks at my mom. Eyes wide with not only love, but admiration and thankfulness. Folks, I've made it my life's work to the understanding, treatment, prevention, and possibly the remedy for this disease. Hannah's lab results conclude that her MECP2 gene is normal, but there are other deletions here that can cause her disorder to be what we consider atypical simply meaning not normal in the case of our diagnosis. Normal here would be the absence or deletion of the MECP2 gene. However, it is my profession assertion that I, in full confidence, can clinically diagnose your daughter. All of the symptoms are there. No verbal communication, weight loss, muscular atrophy, apraxia, hyperventilation, stomach extension, repetitive movements, etc. Yes, I believe we will be following her results under the positive. So... Dr. Birmingham, it's, it's too she has. I would say that I'm very sorry, but this is my life's work, and we want our parents to understand that this is their new norm. We want you to treat your precious here like any other. This disorder in the scope of our minds may seem a burden, but it can be to those who have never felt the difference of being differently abled versus normal. However, looking past these traits, you still have a beautiful little girl who will still, you know love television shows, spending time with family and friends, going to church and school. She will want to be included in family and school events and the like. Our purpose here is to help our children with this new change and help their families improve their overall quality of life. If you will let us help you, we have a wealth of knowledge to offer this beautiful little girl. Dang straight, beautiful little girl. That's why my mama always calls me Mama Sweetheart. Oh, and don't let my prancing around up here give you the wrong idea. I really am a humble individual. Why, well, I'm so humble about everything that I even share my mom and dad with my new little brother, Christian Rain. Yes, my dad named him. I mean, what is it with these weird names? Christian, that's pretty normal, but Rain? 
Anyway, Christian, he's the funniest person alive. Everyone calls him the boy because that's how my dad refers to him. With love, of course. Trust me, that kid is all boy. But he always kisses me goodnight, and he tries to comfort me when I'm upset, and he likes to watch the same cartoons that I do. I can't always play with him because, let's face it, he's a boy and I'm this little petite thing. He plays rough with my cousin, so I just like to sit back and watch. I love my little brother. Hi, my name is Christian. I'm two years younger than my sister, but I'm a good two feet taller than her. Growing up, I never really understood what was going on with Hannah. I mean, yeah, brothers are supposed to love their sisters, but I didn't know how to show her love. She was different, you know? I mean, Mom and Dad always, always have me hug her and tell her goodnight and that I love her, but she never did any of those things back. She would scream and cry for no reason, and I would have to cover my ears like this. Our parents always let her watch whatever she wanted on the big TV in the living room and sit in the big recliner, which I never got to sit in, by the way. Well, I guess it made sense since sometimes when she stood, she would trip over something and fall. She fell a lot, so I guess I can let that one go. But still, whenever I would tell her goodnight, she would just make some obnoxious noise instead of telling me goodnight. Whenever she would cry, everybody would jump to her side and make me get her pacifier and put it in her mouth. And then her drool would get all over my hands. It was disgusting. And they let her keep that pacifier in her mouth for like ever. You thought they would have broken her of that habit, but no. Not even when she turned 10. I mean, am I making too big a deal out of this? Maybe I wanted to watch my cartoons on the big living room TV. Maybe I wanted to sleep in the big bed with mom and dad. Everybody made such a big deal about Hannah, but damn it, I was there too. Baby, Christian said damn to me today. Baby, he's just five. He's probably heard someone else say it. I mean, you know how they are at that age. Impressionable. Well, yeah, but well, the truth is, I wanted to be mad at him, but I just laughed instead. Oh, I hope he doesn't think that this was funny and starts a cursing habit. I mean, he gets in trouble enough at school the way it is. Do you remember that the doctor told us something like this might happen? Your other child may develop some unsavory characteristics due to the different ableness of his sister. Most siblings begin screaming in anger, arguing, cursing. He may lash out at school to become the center of attention due to the increased attention your daughter must have. Even at young ages, he may feel... Jealousy, competition, fear, sadness, hostility, and guilt. He may even feel guilty that she has a disability and he does not, or he may try to alienate her and treat her no different than any other acquaintance he has ever made. Try not to limit him, as his sister may have to be. Allow him time outside, even to himself if you must. Without an opportunity to feel that he can become himself around her, he may one day resent her, but remind him he is loved for exactly who he is may take time, years in fact, for him to come to grips with the fact that she is different. They did, you know, love him. They showed such love to Christian that maybe just a little, I got jealous too. Mom would always love on him when he was upset and dad helped him with his homework every night. They played video games together all the time. But Christian truly is an amazing boy. He's funny, sweet, and so smart. He was able to talk earlier than I was, even though I am two years older. He was able to say those really big words too, like definition and concentrate and obnoxious. I really do love him so much, even though sometimes I can't show it. As I grew older, I eventually understood why everybody treated Hannah so different. She got to eat whatever she wanted because she was losing so much weight. She got to watch whatever she wanted because it was the only way to stimulate her mind. She got to sleep in the bed with mom and dad because she would throw up in her own mouth or stop breathing at night. She got to sit in that chair because she was losing her ability to walk. She would fall and hit her head so often that she would trip and fall so often that she I never meant to cause anyone any trouble. I was just looking for my place in the world, you know? Everyone deserves to be loved. It took me a long time to realize that. And my dad says that for some folks, 
it takes even longer. Last weigh-in, Hannah was at 38 pounds. Today, she's at 34. Considering the growth chart here, and she's currently seven years of age, she should be here. Unfortunately, she is here. Steep decline in weight, no signs of improvement. We may want to consider surgery for a feeding tube. Feeding tube? Yes, it is a device and a procedure that can introduce Hannah to the proper amount of nutrition she needs for growth. This device will give her continuous calories needed to get no, her wait, weight back. No, wait, wait. Are, are you saying that we're not feeding her? We feed her everything we can. I know, I know. We are well <sighs> aware that children like Hannah may have difficulty gaining weight. It is actually all too common. Her metabolism seems very high, and even now, just in our time here, we've seen her move around so much, it's no wonder she's not keeping any weight on. Doc, we give her anything she'll eat. Fast food, home-cooked meals, fried foods, foods loaded with butter, milk, ice cream, anything she'll eat, and sometimes she just won't, okay? She gags on stuff like mashed potatoes and pudding, and, well, maybe that's a texture thing, but I assure you, we're doing everything we can even adult protein supplements. Surgery just, it's not an option right now. Well, no offense to you, sir, but it needs to be an option. And it may be the only one you've got. I'm afraid if you linger too long, the consequences will be dire. I had no clue what Dad and that doctor were talking about. All I know is that I got more meals more often and all of my favorite snacks even late at night. After a while, though, I got pretty tired of everything I kept getting. Even my favorite stuff started to make me feel awful. It's like when you get too much ice cream because it's your favorite flavor, and then you eat too much, and then you get a tummy ache after. Well, anyway, Mom and Dad kept right on with the smorgasbord. Um, baby, I'm, I'm sorry to call you at school, but uh, can you get a substitute and come home? It's it's Hannah. I, I put her on the scales to weigh her, and, and she's only at 30 pounds. Every time I take off her clothes or, or change her diaper, all I can see is her ribs and her back. I can even see the curve in her spine where the doctor said her scoliosis is setting in. I Look, whatever we're doing, it's not working anymore. She wouldn't even eat her breakfast for me. She hasn't had anything solid in two days. I... I think we need to get her the surgery. Just, just please, if the school will let you, come home. Christian, he can stay at school. It's just, it's me and Hannah, and I don't want to be left alone today. Don't forget, Mom and Dad, you have to take care of each other as well. So much of your attention will be on your daughter that you will forget each other. Take a break if you must, even when she is pitching a horrific fit. If you do not take time for yourselves with each other, your relationship will suffer. Divorce rates are high enough as it is without the added stress of treating a child with your daughter's condition. I know you attend church, and that's good, but you may want to consider other avenues of support, such as our foundation here in Alabama, as well as the family liaison in your home state. Don't forget each other. Hannah has a better chance of survival when you are both in her life. The thing is, love like that doesn't come without hard work, compromise, and sacrifice. Dad was always working, but when he got home, he would always tell Mom that he would watch over us if there was anything that she needed to go do, or even just a break from us. And with Hannah, yeah, I know it sounds wrong, but there are many times that we all needed a break. They would never tell anyone, but it would cause Mom and Dad to fight sometimes. There were tense and long moments of silence, and one would ask the other what was wrong, but as soon as that question left their mouths, they were off. They would bring up the smallest things that set each other off, like trash not being out on time, or, or the fact they couldn't get any sleep because Hannah cried all night. Dad had to work, so he had to sleep. Mom was exhausted because she had to stay up. Dad would be so exhausted at school the next day that he would barely be able to make it through before he had to work his second job at the night school. Both needed breaks. Both needed time with just each other. They both needed help. I guess I can't feel too sorry for them because they never let anybody else in. Dad told me that Hannah required a lot of care because she would never be able to care for herself. 
I guess I felt they always had to take care of her because maybe they thought that if they weren't there, something bad would have happened to her. Well, I could have helped. I would have helped, but I was a child and I didn't understand, but I do now. I know my life sounds like a dream. Loving parents, loving brother, all the clothes and food I want. But I have bad days too. I get upset. I don't like it when my cartoons go off. I get sad when I get hurt, like I hurt my foot or something. I mean, who doesn't cry when they fall and hit their head on the floor? I'm pretty clumsy and I fall often. But when I do, it hurts and I cry. Mostly my saddest days are when my mama cries. And there are several days when she just cries and cries. And then daddy cries when he sees her cry. And then Christian cries. And then we all just sort of cry together. Days like that seem to be happening too often. Forgive me, Lord. For I know I'm not to question. I know I'm not to complain. You're the Father of all and your will is life. And I beg your forgiveness. But I have to ask, why? 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 Why have you done this to my little girl? Have I not served you well? Have I deserved this? Does she deserve this? What great sin have I, have she committed? There are murderers and drug pushers, rapists that deserve affliction. But you chose me. You chose her. How dare you? She's an innocent. Make her better. Here and now, do it, do it, do it! I'm so sorry, Father. Whatever I've done, I'm begging you. Remove this from her. Give something to me. Take me, take my life. Just let her have her. I watched my dad that day. He seemed angry. He seemed upset. He cried a lot that day as he held me. He would talk with God and talk with me and talk with God. I kept trying to look in the same place my dad was looking to try and catch a glimpse of God. He said that God makes us in his own image. My mom tells my brother and me that we're the most beautiful things she's ever seen then God has to be the most beautiful thing I will ever see, right? And please don't tell my dad this. I'm afraid it will make him sad because he's tried so hard to find them, but I can see angels. I can't. Shh. They're always around in the living room, and they're flying near our car when we go for a ride. Every nurse and doctor has one by their side, and that's why I haven't been too scared when we go. She has such big, beautiful eyes. Her intense observations may look like she's staring something down, and she is, but this will give you some communicative possibilities. She stares intently when something <gasps> catches her attention. It could be the thing she wants most or the something that intrigues her. It could be that her mind is offering her images that we can't perceive as being there. Angel stock! For many of our girls, it is the former. The communication with the eyes will compensate for the lack of verbal interaction. She will talk to you constantly. It will just be a little different talking than you will be used to. However, that shouldn't change for you. Continue to speak to her like a normal child. Tell her what you are doing when you do it, such as changing her diaper or while she's watching you wash your dishes. Keep her in public school as long as you can. There are resources available to parents regardless of income. Let her go for the social aspect. She needs to see and be with other children playing, and hopefully she will want to be included. It is vital for a child with this type of disorder to experience all aspects of life as fully as she can. She should be treated, as far as we are able, like any other adolescent. Any other adolescent? Why shouldn't I be treated like any other adolescent? I'm no different than any other child. I like to have fun with my friends. I like to watch TV. My favorite color is purple. Unicorns rock. When I'm sad, I cry. And I tell them I'm sad. 
When I get in trouble, I lose my TV privileges. I don't know what that doctor thinks she's talking about, but I'm perfect. Just the way I am. The cardiologist says that Hannah has a bit of an irregular heartbeat. We can't be for certain that this is a part of her disability, but we can't rule it out either. God, this is all so complicated. I mean, her body tells us she has cerebral palsy from the way that she twitches and wrings her hands. The scoliosis in her back has only gotten worse. We haven't seen an improvement with a year in the brace. I mean, some researchers say that this disorder may be linked to Alzheimer's, which runs in my family. But it could be another add-on disability to her already burdened body. She can't speak anymore. I haven't heard her say mama in seven years now. She can't tell me if she remembers things. She can't tell me if her chest is hurting. She can't tell me anything. And then I just, I look into her eyes and I just know. She tells me when she cries. She tells me when she smiles. She tells me when I get lost in her beautiful blues. Her dad's eyes. I know what she wants. I know when she's hurting. It's this special relationship I think any mother has with their children. We know. She needs Natalol for her heart irregularities. What am I supposed to take for mine? When we first found out what was wrong with Hannah, I was very angry with God. I begged him to change her. I begged him to take me in her place. I'm glad he never listened to me, because he has shown genuine and pure love through her to so many. Now, here's a strange but uplifting thought I once had. She will never commit a sin. She can't. Physically, she's incapable, and mentally, well, she'll never understand sin. The nature of hatred, war, harm to another human being, these are all concepts that she will never grasp. And please, don't worry about offending us by offering a handshake or a hug or asking questions. We aren't in depression or grief of any kind. We just found that life with Hannah is what it is, and if it were any different, we may not know how to respond to it. But there is always good in the Lord's will. Always. And hey, here, she'll never date. <laughs> That's a bonus, right? Yeah, she'll never know the heartbreak of some jerk who misuses love to get what he wants. Uh, no prom dresses. Well, actually, I could take it to prom and have to chaperone, but she'll never marry. <laughs> yeah, no expensive wedding dress, no expensive church venue, no crappy wedding band to play the same hacking covers of 80s rock songs. <laughs> but, well, this is heartbreaking for my wife, who will never, never get, get to have mother daughter conversations about the boy she loves. No first dates, no pictures of first dates, no prom videos or pictures. No driving for hours to find the perfect wedding dress, or to have brunch with the mother of the man she's marrying. Probably wouldn't like her anyway. <laughs> no getting to see her walk down the aisle by her father. No father-daughter dances at the reception. And unless Christian gets married and has them, well, no grandchildren. With the good comes the bad. Well, in our case, it seems the bad only comes with more. It's in the fleeting moments of pure goodness that erase our troubles. She has the most infectious laugh. <laughs> she really does look like you. Even if you can't see that, that makes her achingly beautiful. I love that she will fall asleep in my arms when I hold her. I swear, she's looking off into nowhere. She must be looking at God. Yeah, like I said, I was pretty much perfect. Well, it was for the longest time. Before long, I started to notice that I was in the hospital a lot more often. One day, though, I remember I woke up with this plastic thing stuck in my belly. I remember that it hurt really badly for a while, but now I hardly notice it. The doctor's visits haven't stopped, but I don't have to take any gross pills or medicine by mouth anymore. Yeah, Mom and Dad just shove that stuff in some tube-looking thing, and it goes straight to my belly. Same with food! I get this nifty little machine that sits right next to me when I'm watching cartoons, 
and they put this milk-like stuff in a bag, and it drips right to my stomach. I'm always full now. I don't even have to eat anymore. I mean, I can eat when I want to, and whatever I want to, of course. I heard them say at the doctor's office that this thing has helped me gain over 20 pounds in the first six months they put it in. I mean, things are going great. It's just that I've been listening to all these people talking for years now, and while ever never noticed it for the first time, I think I'm starting to realize that something may be wrong with me. And I can tell everyone treats me different than they do the other kids. Nothing bad, like I said before. Always so nice and wonderful. But I don't see Christian's machine. Or his back brace or his belly tube for his doctor's visits. I'm afraid most every day. Afraid that I will one day be unable to provide for my family. Afraid that I'm failing my colleagues and students as an educator. I tell my students that they should face their fears. With God on their side, there is nothing to fear. But I've lied to them. I'm afraid almost every day. People like Hannah have an average life expectancy of 40 years. The most common cause of death is sudden death while sleeping. Hannah started to have seizures. Bad ones. These seizures are not your normal bouts of epilepsy. We call them episodes. The child will simply leave the world for a few moments, generally a few seconds to a minute, and will return. She will be confused but not injured. She then will fall asleep for a longer period than a normal nap. The first one was so bad that her face turned blue and she wasn't breathing. My wife had to rush her to the hospital before she could even get in contact with me to let me know what was going on. Medication may help with these episodes, but do not have to grow to fear. Generally, the body will begin to breathe involuntarily should she pass out, but it is always better to be safe than sorry. If needed, take her to the emergency room. We took her two more times. One time we had to use the emergency diazepam shot. The ambulance arrived three minutes and 23 seconds after her seizure subsided. We kept track. It was on and off, 10 minutes long. Beware of these episodes when she is standing. We call them drop balls. The child will be standing well for a moment, even walking or running, and out of nowhere, she will fall to the floor in a heap. Again, the danger is not necessarily in the synapses of the brain, but the impact injuries that can occur from falling. I'm not afraid of death. I never have been, I never will be. I'm not afraid that she will die. We all will one day. My greatest fear is that my wife and I will pass before her, and she'll be left here alone with no one to take care of her. The following was written by my husband for his doctoral dissertation. Rett syndrome, as defined by Kathy Hunter in the Rett syndrome handbook, is a progressive genetic disorder in children, primarily girls. It is the result of a mutation on the MECP2 gene. Atypical Rett's, which does not show the mutation on the specific MECP2 gene, but manifests with typical Rett symptoms, is clinically diagnosed by Rett specialists. I have Rett syndrome? This syndrome is characterized by chorioathetosis, which is involuntary twitching or writhing. It is also characterized by cerebral palsy, autistic traits such as focused interests, repetitive body movements, and delayed language development. Some children may also experience seizures, an abnormal respiratory pattern of breath holding and hyperventilation, and the loss of purposeful hand functions, such as pinching food, holding utensils, etc. In the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, or DSM-5, Rett's is classified under neurodevelopmental disorders, which is in the subcategory of intellectual disorders. Developmental disorder? Intellectual? Educators should be aware that while intellectual disorders may not progress to a worse state, Rett's is different in that it has periods of worsening the effects, followed by stabilization. In layman's terms, a child with Rett's will suffer symptoms, for example, atrophy of the muscles, which will show deterioration for some time, before the muscles strengthen for another period before deterioration once again. Rett's has no documented genetic inherited link from one parent or the other, and is infinitely difficult to trace. It can completely erase the verbal and gesture-based communication skills, such as waving goodbye, raising a hand to ask or answer a question in class, a handshake, or even a hug. It has no known cure. Although this disorder primarily affects girls, 
Males with Rett syndrome often lack the extra chromosomes that can completely protect their bodies from being overcome by this disorder. Due to this, boys who have the cell mutation on the MECP2 gene often die before or shortly after birth. If I were born a boy, I could... What about Christian? What if he... Mom! Mom? Dad, why is it Mom? Some people liken the condition to the condition of being locked in syndrome. Please. Bodily movement communication still exists. However, communication is more difficult because the girls cannot say that my tummy hurts or I want some juice. Nonverbal communication plus no purposeful use of the hand causes a rift in communication. Therefore, the child may display characteristics of being locked in her own mind with no foreseeable way to unlock it. Sis, here you can. Why? I don't. I don't look like this. I don't have a tube stuck in my belly. I. I don't look like this. I'm not supposed to. I'm supposed to be diseased, disabled. No, you are not diseased. You're not disabled. You are as exactly as you were created. Perfect. But Dad, Mom said that you created the space for the world to see me, and they're not. They're getting some made-up image through so This is how we see you, sweet baby. That's why we're doing this. Our God tells us to speak up for those who cannot. And you do have a voice, a purpose, a story. You're here to be the helping hands of others like you. A voice among the silent, a voice that has taught us, your family, to what depths we are willing to go for love. And through you, we have learned patience, humility, understanding, as well as we have learned grief, isolation, fear, all the knowledge that comes along with it. There is so much that this world perceives as so vastly important. Those insignificant things could not matter in the slightest. But what you teach, my little Lee, deserves to be heard by the whole world. The world? Look out there. These people, the world. I see them and I've been talking to them, but where are their voices? Theirs have been stopped by yours, sweet dear. See how powerful your voice is? There's power here, Hannah. Your power, the effect you have on others, can not only stop their voices in their throats, but it can change the world. You can speak not only for our family, but for others with different abilities. Some people feel that they are alone in their grief, but of course they're not. Their special family is loved and adored and supported. How? How can I? I mean, I've been trapped in this room, my mind, I guess. And after everything that I've heard, I can't do anything. I have this disability, this... You don't have a disability. We do. How can you mean that? Our world is often destroyed by those of us who are able. The ability to use our hands allows us to throw a punch. The ability to talk gives us the ability to argue. You will never bully another child. You will never shoot a gun into a crowd. Because of who you are, I believe you will never be subjected to the cruelties the rest of us face. We can stand to learn a thing or two from people like you. Those of us who have different abilities than the rest. You can truly be a hero. 
You can teach us true love, peace, happiness if we don't allow the abilities of the world in our way. And you don't, my little Lee. So, this place, these people, what am I supposed to say? We've been waiting all our lives to hear you speak, Hannah. Just say what it is you think needs to be said. What should I say? I should say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. He will make your path straight. Be strong in times of hardship. It'll pass and make you stronger for it. When you can, serve others with kindness and love. When you cannot, serve others with kindness and love. Say hello to the people that don't speak, on the off chance that they are unable. Count every sunrise. Try and beat my dad's score. Just because we are different doesn't mean we have to be. Since the greatest of all things is love, then do just that without question. Look at them, Daddy. Look, they're listening. Daddy? Mama? Christian? I love you. I am Little Lee. I am a child with Rett Syndrome. I have a voice. And one day, maybe, you will be made brand new. Just like me.